Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Uh, I would like to uh, start a new chapter in this energy um, uh, section of this course. This chapter will be uh, dedicated to light, light and energy which it carries. Well, uh, first of all, this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14, presented on Unizor.com. Uh, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from this website. You just have to go to Physics 14 course, then Energy, and that's one of the um, topics which is presented on the next screen. Um, the reason for this is that, again, as a course, it has certain logical sequence, so there are prerequisites for this particular lecture. Um, and also there is another course called uh, Mass 14 it's on the same website. And math is very important for physics. I mean, especially calculus and vector algebra, they are used everywhere in physics. So it, you definitely have to be proficient. And if you are not, take the Mass for Teens course on this website. The courses are completely free. There are no uh, ads, so your attention will not be distracted at all. OK, now back to light. You see, the problem with light is it's really a very difficult uh, subject from the physics perspective, primarily because people did not really understand clearly what light actually is. Um, you see, the um, Newtonian mechanics was primarily dedicated to like plain objects which we can observe uh, and we can measure them, etc., etc. And it's all related to matter, something which we can feel, we can look at, etc. Now, the first problem with light, for instance, the light of the sun, is that there is no medium between sun and, and, and earth. How this light actually travels in, in the vacuum. And on the top of this, we are talking about energy which it carries. How can it carry energy if it doesn't seem to be any material um, uh, uh, substance in, in between sun and, uh, and earth? Well, some time ago, people were thinking that there is something in between called ether. Um, but then they basically um, completely negated this particular theory. There were other theories. So that's what we are talking about right now. Uh, these evolutions of different views onto light. So let me just start talking about light as carrier of energy. Well, first of all, I would like to state that light carries energy. Now, why is it obvious? Well, primarily because when you are leaving something under the direct sunlight, it, it will warm up. Now, warm means kinetic energy of the molecules inside the object. So, who provides this kinetic energy if it's just lying um, uh, under the sun's light? Well, the light. So, light carries energy. Now, there is a very interesting experiment. Um, there is a device called radiometer, and here is how it's uh, um, arranged. So, you have some kind of a axis, and you have four um, uh, perpendicular uh, small, very light rods or whatever, and you have a, a little plate on each rod. Now, this plate has two sides. One side is silverish, like mirror kind of thing, and another is black. So black absorbs light, as we know, and uh, the sil silver uh, um, uh, surface re reflects the light. Now, if you will... Now, and it's supposed to basically rotate in this point. So, and also, it should be in the vacuum. So this is called radiometer, and... Um, I have a picture in uh, one of the notes well, for this particular lecture and on YouTube, which I have a reference to, by the way, in the notes, you even have a video what happens. So, if you will put this device under light, these plates will start rotating. And if you will put it back in the darkness, for instance, it will stop rotating, not under direct sun. Um, now, why? Well, obviously, if we put it under the light, it starts rotating. It means light ha has energy, obvious, right? So, um, why is it rotating? 
Well, primarily because the silver side of each plate is reflecting light, the black side is absorbing light, which means it absorbs the energy, which means the molecules on the surface of the, of the black side start moving faster. So if you have, this is your plate, this is a silver and this is black. So the molecules here on this left side becomes agitated more because the uh, sunlight's energy is absorbed and they're heating more from this side than from that side. And since these uh, plates are arranged that the, the, the faces which are uh, silver, they're all on the same side of the, of the plate, so the rotation becomes actually, as a, a, the rotation starts as, as, a, as a main motion of, of, of this construction. Now, um, another proof that the light has energy is that we see it, we see the light. Now, what does it mean that we see the light? Well, obviously, light comes into the eye. It somehow affects certain um, receptacles over there, certain cells, and they are, again, being somehow agitated, and they're sending electric signal to the brain, and that's how we see the light. So, again, without energy, it's, it would be impossible. So, I think I have convinced you that light carries energy question is why, how, how much? That, that's a very big question actually and people were suffering with this issue for a very very long time. Well and still suffer. <laughs> okay so um, let's just go back to the previous lectures related to gravitation. Now we were, we were introducing the concept of gravitational field it has certain force, it pulls, and it has therefore certain energy. Well, if you're just putting uh, into an object into the uh, gravitational field, if it doesn't move, it still has a potential energy. If you let it go, it will go towards the source of gravity, converting potential energy into kinetic energy. Now, so the concept of field is very important. What is gravitational field? It's a special kind of a state of a of a space. It doesn't have any material um, uh, sub substance which actually carries the gravitational field. This is certain domain of the space which has certain forces and it has certain energy in it. Exactly the same thing we were talking, we can talk about the light. There is a concept of electromagnetic field. We will talk about electromagnetic field in details when we will talk about magnetism and electricity. However, as of right now, you just probably have to accept my word, electromagnetic. This is a field and the light is um, uh, going through this electromagnetic field in the same way as gravity goes through the gravitational field. I mean, they're completely different fields, obviously. But the concept of non-material substance, some kind of a special kind of a space which actually is a carrier of the energy and the forces, that's what the field actually is. And this is just a separate kind of a field, electromagnetic field. Now, it, it was actually very difficult for people to come up with this particular um, idea and to prove that this is really electromagnetic field. And there is a, a lot of very interesting historical um, books and articles about this, how the whole theory of light was developing. Um, so from the very simple um, kind of a concept that there is substance, material substance called ether, and light is just the waves inside of that ether in as much as you have the water waves um, on the surface of the water. Well, that was an idea, but then again it was kind of disproved differently and certain other ideas were introduced 
and electromagnetic field as a carrier of, uh, of the light is the idea which is considered to be right now the uh, most important kind of a thing and, uh, and true to the moment, let's put it this way. And, um, and the light is basically the waves in this electromagnetic field. We are replacing the term ether, which is kind of a material substance, with the word electromagnetic field, but we are still retaining the term waves. So the light is basically the waves of electromagnetic uh, field. Now, um, the wave has certain parameters. What's the most important parameters of the wave? Well, there are basically two. If we imagine the wave as just the sinusoidal kind of oscillations, uh, let's say it's waves on the surface of water, right? So what's the most important characteristics? Well, one is called amplitude. Well, that's basically the deviation from the neutral state. So on this, this is basically amplitude from this point to this point. This is amplitude. Now, the greater the amplitude, well, the more energy uh, this wave actually carries, right? Another very important characteristic of the wave is frequency. So you can have these waves with this, with this amplitude. Or you can have this wave with the same amplitude. So there is a frequency. Now, what is frequency? Number of oscillations per unit of time. It's measured, by the way, in the units called hertz. Hertz is one hertz is one oscillation per second. So if we observe the waves on the surface of the water, we can always uh, check how many of these waves are uh, moving per second. So that's what basically uh, our um, frequency actually is. Now, here is a very important thing. Energy. We're talking about energy, right? So it's kind of obvious that the ampli amplitude of the waves is directly related to, um, to the energy. Well, it's less obvious what is the relationship between frequency and um, the waves and, uh, and the energy. Well, um, let me put it this way. If you um, know uh, something about photo labs which were developing the old-fashioned film, not the contemporary digital one, but the old one, with chemicals, etc., etc., so you probably know that um, usually these labs were lit with a red light. So why red light? Why not white? Well, for obvious reasons, we don't want to overexpose our film, right? So it means that the red light doesn't really expose our film. So what does it mean? It means that the red light carries less energy than, let's say, white light right less energy because obviously again the, the the film developing the whole procedure was based on the properties of the light to somehow affect the chemical composition of the of the film and then using certain um chemicals we can make it stable and uh, and the image actually is retained on the film but the red light doesn't do this so red light the only explanation you can have is that the red, red, the red light doesn't have as much energy to change the chemical composition of the film. Okay, so what's the difference between red light and white light? Well, we all know what is the rainbow, for instance, and we all know that white light is actually a combination of many different um, monochromatic, as we are saying, lights. Red is a color as well as green and, and blue and, and violet, etc. 
So it looks like the light has certain characteristic which we, the people, view as color. Again, why why do we have different kind of understanding, different view and different lights? Well, again, because certain lights are affecting our receptacles in our eye, our cells, which are responsible for for uh, for ac accepting this light, they affect it differently. And what's the difference? Again, energy. So certain lights are affecting more, certain less. And it appears that something like the red light, it affects less than, let's say, green light. Or white light, which is a combination of red, blue, green, etc. So, what exactly is the source of this difference? What's the difference between red and, and, and green? Well, yes, the energy which they carry. But from this perspective, from perspective of amplitude and, and frequency, amplitude is basically the brightness of the light, right? So if the brightness is exactly the same, what's the difference between red and green? The frequency. And it was actually determined through many different, very sophisticated experiments that uh, yes every different color of light which we observe has different frequencies and red has the lower and the violet has the higher frequency actually um, right now we know that red is something around 0 0.4 times 10 to the 15 hertz and violet is something like 0 0.7 times 10 to the 15 hertz. So 10 to the 15 is more or less where these lights which we can observe are concentrating. Now, but we also know, well at least you remember, like ultraviolet lights or infrared lights, right? Infrared for instance is something which our remote controls are uh, uh, are, are using to control the TV. Uh, UV, ultraviolet lights, is something which we're trying to protect our eyes using special sunglasses. Now, why do we have to protect our eyes? Well, again, violet has the highest frequency and therefore the highest energy. Ultraviolet has even more. So, my point right now is that not only the visible light is basically a, a manifestation of the waves of electric electromagnetic field. There are some other electromagnetic field waves which are not really perceived la, uh, by, by our eyes as, as visible light, but nevertheless they exist and we can use them. Well, again, significant number of important experiments and technical developments basically have established that we have the whole set of different phenomena related to electromagnetic waves, waves of electromagnetic field rather. Now, the most um, energetic with the highest frequency uh, electromagnetic waves are related to so-called gamma rays which we are actually getting, we are bombarded from space and our atmosphere is, well, partially shields us from these rays. Now, um, then there was a discovery of X-rays, if you remember, by the person called Rentgen. X-rays are also electromagnetic um, waves of the frequency less than gamma rays. Now this is on the level of 10 to the 24 hertz. So X-rays is less frequency. Then we have ultraviolet lights. Still we are not seeing these but gamma rays actually or X-rays actually you know it can actually damage because they are very energetic that's why when we are getting an x-ray um, in the dental office, for instance, they usually cover with some kind of a protective 
um, piece all, all, all the body right now ultraviolet light it's it's not really uh, adversely affect our body but it can affect our eyes and that's why we're trying to protect against it well then we have the visible spectrum the visible spectrum is from violet down to the red and then even less frequent oscillations have um, infrared then we have microwave yeah the regular kitchen microwave it's also using electromagnetic fields magnetron is something which is inside which is a source of electromagnetic field of this particular frequency and then we have radio waves now radio waves are also different we have am fm we have long short um, medium range waves and the longest waves the longer obviously the less frequent these waves are they have actually um, about like three or four hertz three or four per second so you see from the, the, the range of different wave frequencies of electromagnetic field are from something like this 3-4 Hertz to 10 to the 24 Hertz it's an extremely wide range and obviously extremely wide um, energy which they carry and again we will talk about how to measure it etc right now this lecture is only kind of introduce you to a concept of light and everything, whatever people have learned um, about light, which, which I was just trying to convey right now, uh, turned upside down <laughs> with the uh, development of the quantum theory. Well, I am not the person who can explain what is quantum theory is right now, at least not at the moment. Uh, but believe me, it was a revolution. I mean, the light also electromagnetic theory electromagnetic field uh, theory of the light still is the one which we are uh, using as the theory right now however quantum mechanics and quantum theory of light brought a little bit more to this apparently according to the quantum theory light is not really like this plain sinusoidal wave like we have on the let's say on the surface of the water it actually comes in packets um, and it's difficult for me to explain right now what packet is but maybe you can imagine it as high frequency for, and then low frequency and high frequency again and low maybe I mean you just have to have some kind of a model what is a packet so you can view the packet for instance like this one and only these guys are actually carrying the real energy nothing in between now this packet is called photon so there is a concept called photons and this is the most elementary so to speak uh, uh, part of light which still is the light remember what molecule is the molecule is the smallest piece of matter which still carries the chemical characteristics of this particular matter like molecule of water or molecule of uh, nitrogen or something again the photon is actually the smallest unit we can measure the the energy which uh, is carried by, by by the light well any, a, anyway it, it seems to be representing certain other um, view to the light the view to the light as um, the number of certain particles which are flying now it's still a wave but it behaves like a particle let's put it this way because if you have something like this pulsation or I don't know maybe it's a pulse or whatever anyway packets uh, each packet while being still a wave might be viewed as as a particle and this is the contemporary view towards light the energy can be, me can be measured for one particular photon 
of particular frequency, obviously, etc. So, this is the smallest part of the um, of the uh, of the light. There is no smaller part. Let's put it this way, because again, if if you kind of try to think about the waves in the water, you can basically divide it as much as possible. It will still be a wave. But here we have this smallest part, like in matter we have a molecule. Now in light we have this photon, which is the smallest part, a smallest particle. You can say it's a, it's like it behaves like a particle. Let's put it this way. It's still a wave, but it behaves like a particle. And basically the number of photons is the characteristic of the brightness of the light. Now the frequency, each photon is um, uh, oscillating is the frequency of light. So these two characteristics are, uh, are expressed in in slightly different way through the photons. Now, um, again, I will not go into uh, any details of the quantum mechanics, but I will still employ a regular wave-like properties of the light, which is amplitude and, and, and frequency. And they basically define the light. Um, maybe sometimes I will um, do something related to characteristic of the photons, but that's not right now part of this particular lecture. So again, this lecture I wanted to introduce you to a concept of light, and I don't know um, if, if, if I succeeded, but I wanted to impress you with how difficult it is to really go into the very root of what actually light is. Um, it was a very painful kind of process of development uh, uh, of this physics of light. Um, and uh, uh, certain mathematical calculations which are related, um, very important and very involved mathematical calculations like Maxwell's uh, equations, so anyway, and then theory of relativity actually also related to light, which says the speed of light is the maximum speed possible to achieve. So all these are components of contemporary view on what is actually light. And again, my purpose was to basically convince you that light as, as a source of energy, as a carrier of the energy, is, is a very sophisticated object of research and development and, and science. Um, but, you know, there is something which we call contemporary level. So, that's it. I would suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, because they might contain some, something which I have missed. Um, uh, and uh, if you're interested, actually, there is a um, video on, on my... Uh, mm, uh, in the in the notes for this lecture, there is a video of how radiometer is working. So you you put it in light and it starts uh, spinning, and you put it back into the darkness, it stops. So that's a very interesting experiment just to show you how uh, energy is carried by light. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.